let's consider this number line here. You can see in the middle we have zero. And if we come in this direction, you can see that we're counting up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we could carry on in this direction forever. If we go back to the zero and now come in this direction, you can see that the numbers are going minus one, minus two, minus three. And we can carry on going in this direction forever. Now between the marks, so for example, between 1 and 2, I could have 1 and a half, 1.33. So I can put a dot on any place on that line and it will represent a number. Now if I just concentrate on the following numbers, the ones I'm currently putting these red arrows against, what I'm pointing at here are the natural numbers. And I could carry on doing this. I could point at the 6 and the 7 and so on and keep on pointing forever at all of the numbers that I mark off in the way in which I've marked from 1 to 7 off. And the next one would be 8, the next one would be 9, the next one would be 10, etc. Now these are examples of natural numbers or counting numbers. And the reason they're called natural numbers is if you go back in time and imagine that we didn't have any symbols how would you represent a herd of five cattle for example without the figures well you would get a piece of wood and you would mark off a little groove in the wood for each cattle that was part of the herd so if there was five cattle in the herd you would have five marks on a piece of wood there was no need for you to have a piece of wood to mark off how many cattle you had if you didn't have any cattle. Now that might seem a strange thing to say, but I'll come back to that in a moment. But for the time being, let's just remind us of the natural number set. The natural number set is written here with these open braces or curly brackets followed by one, two, three, four, five. These three dot means it goes on forever and then I close the braces. And within the natural numbers, i.e. the counting numbers, there is no zero. Because it's not natural to want a zero. Because we use them to count things. And we don't regard zero as something we use to count. We might want to do it today, but if you go back in history, you never wanted to say, look, I don't have anything of this. I have no cattle. But these days, you can use zero to say, well, I don't have anything of that. And you can write a zero down. So if you have nothing in the bank and you're not overdrawn, you could say your balance is zero. And you can use the symbol for the zero. A good way of representing natural numbers or any types of numbers is with a container. And what I've done here, I've drawn a bag, and into this bag I'm writing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Those are the natural numbers, and of course I could keep stuffing this bag with all of the natural numbers. It'd have to be a huge bag if I'm going to write all the natural numbers in, because the natural numbers never end. They go on and on and on and on and on. Let's have a look at this. Is 0, 1.5, minus 1, 3.75... Are they natural numbers? In other words, do they belong in this container, in this bag? Well, 0 doesn't. 1.5 doesn't. Minus 1 doesn't. Minus 3.75 doesn't. So we can see what natural numbers are. And I've just recapped this briefly because what this video is really about is whole numbers. What are whole numbers? Well, if I go back to the number line, whole numbers start at 0. You can see I've got a blue line now pointing to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I could point to the 5, the 6, and the 7. But what I'm doing here, I'm pointing to all of the whole numbers. And you should see that I appear to be pointing to all of the counting numbers plus the 0. And in fact, if we look at the set of whole numbers, we open the braces and inside we put a 0, a comma, a one, comma, two, comma, three, comma, and then those three dots are telling me we carry on writing this down forever, and then we have the closing braces or the curly brackets, as you can see here. 
So whole numbers contain the zero. And the invention of the zero was a leap forward in mathematics. And an important one, and it's one that we will be discussing in due course. Now, of course, we can draw a container for all of the whole numbers, which I'm doing here. Now, what goes in this container? Well, the answer is whole numbers. And we've seen that the whole numbers contain all of the counting numbers. So what I'm going to do here, I'm simply going to put in the bag that I had down here. So and you can see it's got one, two, three, four, five, etc. And of course that bag would be stuffed with all of the natural numbers, the counting numbers. But in addition, of course, I've got the zero. So this container contains the zero and all of the natural numbers. We can do this another way. We can have this area here representing the natural numbers contained within this outer area that I'm drawing. And this outer area represents all the whole numbers. And all the whole numbers contain all the natural numbers plus the zero. What I wish to do now is to ask this question. Is zero, five, minus three, 2.33, 1,000.3, are they numbers that would be allowed into this bag? In other words, are they whole numbers? Well, zero is, five is, minus three isn't, 2.33 isn't, 1,000.3 is not. Here's another way in which we can represent natural and whole numbers. We can have a rectangular area to represent the natural numbers, and then we can have another rectangular area representing the whole numbers. And we can see the natural numbers are contained within it. And of course, in this region here, what we would have, we would have the zero. So the difference between whole numbers and natural numbers is whole numbers just have this extra zero, and they contain everything else that the natural numbers has. Check out the supporting website for these videos and also consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and get an automatic update every time I upload a new video. Also consider subscribing to the Google Plus Circle that relates to these videos.